Spooksters, and welcome to Snacks and Screams, a show for curious thrill and chill seekers who want to shake up movie nights. I'm your host, Deandra Laser, and welcome to my nightmare. Snacks and Screams, I review scary movies as well as unique and unusual snacks. But this time, we're shaking things up. Yeah, the show that shakes up movie nights is getting shakier. As you can tell by the title, this isn't your average Snacks and Screams. We're delving into the world of my man, the man of my dreams. JK, it's the knifey boy himself, Freddy Krueger. But not any of his films, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Actually, the son of a bee basket had himself a real honest to goodness TV show, Freddy's Nightmares. Even including a pseudo prequel to the original film entitled No More Mr. Nice Guy. Probably because after they make him mad, he's not nice anymore. And the sequel, Sister's Keeper, which is certainly number two. In case you missed it, Freddy's Nightmares is now on the horror streaming service Screambox. You can access it via the service's website or via Amazon Prime. Not Optimus Prime. Stop trying. You did it, little friend. You saved me. For the first time ever, you can watch and rewatch all 44 episodes whenever you want, even if it hurts. In this anthology style series similar to The Twilight Zone, Freddy Krueger returns to serve as the show's host and occasional cast member, bringing his characteristic mischief and sadistic humor to each episode. Hmm, I don't want to do this again. All right, instead of repeating myself, I'm just going to pull up parts of an old video and put it in. The once syndicated series, Freddy's Nightmares, aired from October 1988 to March 1990. In his trademark tattered sweater, felt fedora, and razor-fingered glove, Freddy seeks revenge on the town of Springwood. Over the years, several horror networks have re-aired the series, and episodes have even popped up online. But nothing has been closer to owning Freddy's Nightmares directly from the source than this. So, if you've been dying to rewatch the series or finally see it for the first time, now's your chance. Shh, it's okay. You're the best movie in the whole world. I didn't know we were back. The series was produced by New Line Cinema and originally distributed by Lorimar Television. However, Warner Brothers Television would assume syndication rights after acquiring Lorimar. New Line is now a subsidiary of Warner Brothers. Quit buying each other! Directors who contributed to Freddy's Nightmares include Toby Hooper, Mick Garris, Tom McLaughlin, and Dwight H. Little, Stewart's dad, probably. One of the most notable cast members to show up along the way was Brad Pitt, earning one of his earliest screen credits. <laughs> nice pits, Brad. <laughs> Warner Brothers released select episodes of Freddy's Nightmares on home video and even attempted to release the series on DVD in 2003. They started with the first three episode sampler, Freddy's Nightmares Volume 1. Unfortunately, sales for Volume 1 did not meet Warner's expectations, and they abandoned all subsequent releases. But for the life of me, I can't see why. The series re-aired for a bit on Chiller TV and the El Rey Network, while most of the episodes have been scattered across the internet. Like a hay in a needle stack. Yikes! Until now, you can finally watch it all on Screambox. Thank you, bloody disgusting. You're like horror Santa Claus, and you got like a great beard. Like just an epic beard. And also you're jolly, but like secretly you want to be bad. Oh, that could be a movie. Who's weird and Santa. I'm on my last break. Apparently I've just received several requests to halt the creepy beard talk. So, No More Mr. Nice Guy is about how the repulsive Fred Krueger becomes our beloved dream demon. The episode follows him through his trial, his execution, and his return as that hot dog you dropped in a campfire. This is also where we are introduced to the stars of the next episode, Sister's Keeper. What happens to one happens to the other. 
We're reviewing the most appropriate snack in the Freddyverse, Soul Pizza. Now, I know what you're thinking. But Deandra, the show is about trying new things. We flippin' know you've had pizza. I've totally had pizza before, you spookin' morons. I've never had this pizza. Inspired by Nightmare 4 and a special recipe by the homicidal homemaker, I present to you Soul Pizza. I love Soul Pizza. <laughs> I went with my favorite local pizza place, Massey's. They put my pizza in a robot locker. Remember that story Marge tells Nancy in the first movie? The one where she and a bunch of parents tracked Freddy down? Yeah, that's basically this. Except there's no Marge or Donald in sight. But I digress so I don't become... Aggress. Freddy kicks off the episode by telling the audience not to be afraid, because this story is his nightmare, not theirs. But also it's theirs. The show starts to pick up in the courtroom. Kruger is chained and sitting in a glass case. I'm in a glass case! As the slideshow of his victims is being shown to the court, the names and ages of prey are read aloud for everyone. Justice seems like a sure thing until the defense attorney requests the dismissal of all charges due to new evidence. Plot armor incoming. Turns out that evidence in the case was gathered without Miranda Wright's being read the right way. Way to go, Miranda! Kruger is free? What is it, your first day, Lieutenant Blocker? Boo this man! <laughs> nice going, Blocker! Obviously, if you can't block the block, you can't talk the block. Ain't that right, sports fans? Especially when your two twin daughters, Lisa and Merritt. Yeah, that's right. I said Merritt. Sounds like somebody misheard you trying to say Mary. Merritt? Anyways, both daughters were potential victims of Freddy Krueger. Merritt has gone mute from shock. Merritt. Blocker tells his wife, Sarah, he almost shot Freddy. And naturally, she wonders why he didn't. Duh. We want justice. Back at the Blocker residence, the family is huddled for safety, and then that moron Lieutenant Blocker decides to leave to track Freddy. But not without a well-placed warning about the dangers of killing him. Don't do it. You feel that justice? Apparently not. Nice going, parents. Now you've decided to go and form some mob to take sweet, sweet justice in your own hands and decide to murder Freddy. Meanwhile, a happy Freddy is off in his lair delivering some of the cheesiest lines ever. I'm talking Lindberger. I'm talking Munster. Oh, shit. Do you smell that? <sighs> justice. <laughs> Cheeseburg. Order, order in the court, order, order. Bailiff, who do we have on trial today? Your Honor, we have Freddy Krueger. He's wanted for multiple child murders and for being in Freddy's nightmare. Fred, baby, this is bad. Why you back to your old tricks? Why you playing with toys? <laughs> And then, the parents' big dumb mob tracks Freddy down to his boiler room. But of course he isn't there because he's going after the twins. Twins, Basil. Twins. Chaos ensues at the Blocker residence as Freddy murders a policeman for eating chicken. <laughs> The man was just having a meal. I just wanted a little snack and scream. <laughs> but before Kruger can do anything to the family, that big dumb parent mob and Lieutenant Blocker show up, and Freddy makes a daring escape. The big dumb mob, followed by Lieutenant Moron, chase Freddy back down to his boiler room. Now that big dumb mob don't think they even got the guts to kill a man. Then Freddy. As if he could see into the future, taunts Blocker into killing him. Blocker's driven over the edge after Freddy exclaims, I am forever. forever. I feel like they borrowed that from somewhere. I am eternal. Freddy is doused in gasoline and lit on fire. <laughs> lit. Marge didn't mention any of this to Nancy. Probably because she wasn't effing there. Oh, and Freddy promises to be back. I'll be back. Blogger starts to have horrific visions and regrets killing Freddy. Meanwhile, Merritt amps up the creep as she sings, One, two, I'm coming for you. Welcome, cringe!
Back at the police station, Blocker receives a letter in the mail. It says, I'm burning in hell, I wish you were here. The letter burns up in his hand. Man, they really went hard on the nods to Nightmare 4. Not so subtle after all. <laughs> <laughs> now the fudging FBI are on their way and Blocker's out here hiding bodies in cars. But when Blocker goes to find the body, Frederick has flown the coop and there are slash marks on the car. Oh no. Merrick confronts her father about killing Freddy and she appropriately chooses to deliver the message in a sing-song manner. Teens. Blocker attempts to convince his wife to leave Springwood now that Freddy has poisoned it. And they will, but not without visiting the dentist first. As one does. Of course, while there, he falls asleep. He thinks he's looking at a sexy lady, but it's just our pal Freddy. The Fredster tortures and kills the poor moron. Freddy, the man was just going to an afternoon dentist appointment. Well, it was tooth hurting. <laughs> Freddy then asks the audience, who's next? IDK, but I volunteer as tribute. I volunteer! Now that episode one is done sucking my soul, it's time to replenish with some soul food. So based on the movie, we look real close and it looks like it has pepperoni, possibly some sausage, and definitely meatballs on the pizza. We tried our best. Let's see how it tastes. I love soul food. Oh, that's, I'm gonna tell you later on. All right, now that my soul has been replenished, it's back to the sucking of souls. On to episode two, the sequel. Sorry about that. That isn't all we've seen of the Blocker twins. Here we go again, flipping merit. This gets a big old demerit from me. <coughs> the terrible twosome return in season one, episode seven. Sister's Keeper, which sounds like the season finale of Seventh Heaven. Lisa's popular at school, but Merritt isn't, which doesn't make sense. For goodness sakes, don't they have the same thoughts? Cheers. PlayStation. Merritt's been traumatized since her father's death, and from, you know, being named Merritt. Recently, she's been having recurring dreams of Freddy Krueger, whom she blames for her father's death, even though no one else believes her. One night, Lisa and her boyfriend Slick Johnny come home late and are tonguing down on the couch. Right, Gen Z? Somehow, Merrick gets pulled into a creepy 80s virtual threesome and feels a sweet caress. But as she drifts asleep from the sweet caress, Freddy crashes the sweet caress party and slashes Merritt, which we get. However, it doesn't affect her, it hurts Lisa, her sister. Lisa blames Slick Johnny and tells him to cut his nails. Gee, who are you, Tina's mom? Tina, honey, you gotta cut your fingernails, you gotta stop that kind of dreaming. Later in the night, Merritt has another dream where she is being choked to death by a red and green blanket, which we get. Like, we're team blanket. Once again, Lisa is harmed and Merritt is to blame. I'm uh, noticing a theme. Following a day of harassment, Merritt talks about how hard it is to be her. But Lisa's like, nah, it's just your vibes. You're not based. Right, Gen Z? Lisa conjures up a plan to live a day in each other's shoes. Yeah. But there's a change of plans and Lisa decides to go to school all by her lonesome. Problem is, now she's married, which we all know is terrible. While at school, she gets hit on by her boyfriend, Slick Johnny, who thinks she's married. And she connects for a direct hit. 
slick Johnny decides to check on the other one. Probably Merritt. We're lost. Checks notes. And yeah, it is apparently Merritt. And she likes the feeling of not being Merritt. Which we get. So then, not Lisa freaks out when things get too steamy and tells Slick Johnny she's actually Merritt. Can you imagine Slick Johnny on his way home? That night, Lisa and Merritt accidentally make a stop in Fredtown on their way to Dreamville. This time, Merritt teams up with Freddy to taunt and scare Lisa. But naturally, our man and Fred turns on Merritt and attacks her. Once again, Lisa comes out harmed. She runs to find her mother, only to see not Lisa pretending to be her. Naturally, because they think Lisa is Merritt, she is hauled off to an asylum by two little buff boys. Turns out she was dreaming the whole time. <laughs> Literary geniuses! Fred, that's so cliche! Well, I guess I'm the man of her dreams. <laughs> After another encounter with Freddy, Lisa finally believes Merritt and the girls decide to never sleep again. Which is like a major life choice. Like moving into a new apartment or getting a free range ferret. Either way, their first attempt is uh, not great. Later that night, the two find themselves in the same dream world, though separated from each other. Merritt is the bait for Freddy, and just before he can put us out of our misery, Lisa bashes Freddy with a wooden bat. into a neatly folded pile of clothes. Aw, how considerate. See, Glenn, Nancy was right. Midnight, baseball bats, and boogeymen do work. Midnight, baseball bats, and boogeymen. Beautiful. After the dream, the twins learn that they can link up in dreams, and Lisa comes up with a plan of wishing Freddy away. She believes that if they believe a bunch, Freddy will vanish from their dreams forever. You have only to believe if you wish to achieve, Kevin. When they fall asleep, the two find themselves together in a boiler room. Like where Freddy died. Oh no. Freddy quickly pops out, cause they're basically in his rec room, and he attacks both girls. As you do when someone enters your rec room illegally. Lisa and the other one begin chanting Freddy into non-existence and he fades away from his rec room. So easy a caveman could do it. Merritt runs to find Lisa, suspiciously sitting on the couch. But their triumph is undone when Lisa is dragged into the cushions by Freddy, a la Glenn in Nightmare One. Waking up in the real world, Merritt uh, finds Lisa has been murdered. Her mother accuses Merritt of killing her sister because everyone blames everything on Merritt. Which we get. Some family. Don't turn your back on them. Merritt lives while Lisa dies. But at least she wasn't named Merritt. Whew. Now that I've gotten through that mumbo jumbo gumbo, the time has come to break out the honesty, break out the truth, and break out some justice. Welcome to my ratings, bitch. <laughs> Flaming pumpkins, are you ready to get freddified? Are you ready to get freddy? Are you ready to be fretted up? <laughs> all right, it's time to clear the air on all of this Merit talk. Do you remember that bit when I said, this time Merit teams up with Freddy to taunt and scare Lisa. Merit teamed up with Freddy. And now her sister is dead. Merit sucks. I'm not gonna BS ya. I'm not gonna say, oh, it's a nightmare on Elm Street, so it's perfect. If you want the warm fuzzy, you should be a Friday the 13th fan. Sure. 
Nightmare! I love everything about Nightmare, but this show is uh, not great. It's like a spooky soap opera. Some of the music is boinky. I don't keep calling what that means, but that's the best way I can describe it. If you've seen these episodes, you'll know. Boinky. That's not to say it's not a fun show. My Freddy meter was filled to the brim. I like it. I really do. It's so bad, it's good. Boinky. The episodes are poorly acted and the writing is uh, mediocre. Hey, like this show. Things are often too cheesy to be scary. I'm talking Limburger. I don't know why they needed to do a follow-up with the Blocker twins. I guess they needed a quick idea because they had writer's blocker. There are some nuggets. I your soul. But it's mostly just Robert playing up Freddy. And even though he's the best thing about it, he still couldn't save it. See that? People who insist a new nightmare film won't be good without Robert, even though we've only had one try and it was trash, but we know why. Merit. She got her sister killed! Honestly, it feels like wasted potential for a prequel. I get the limitations of TV, but they really should have tied this back to the franchise more. At least bring back Marge and Donald on wacky names alone. Now that's a family. Marge, Don, and Marin. There's always room for family. The best bet for the next Elm Street installment should be a proper prequel. Make it about the hunt for the Springwood Slasher. Follow Don, not Lieutenant Moron. <laughs> Rhyme! Bring in crime and drama elements mixed with horror. Like flippin' Mindhunter. I could go on, and I have. But I won't. Right now. I give these episodes... Two and a half Flaming Freddies out of a possible five Flaming Freddies, which is a real rating system. All right, nightmares. I'm not sorry. And that half Freddy is a generous bump, because while I'm honest, it's still Nightmare and I'm biased. Come at me. But like, don't. We have a huge, terrifying dog. Despite my feels about the episodes, the show is still definitely a good time and worth a watch. Just don't expect the same quality of the films. Most of them, anyway. Just watch them! Fred, baby, you're guilty. Of being a good time! <laughs> and now for the soul pizza. I'm gonna take one last bite and you know, make sure that my rating is solid. You know, I've never met a pizza I didn't like. And this is no different, except the sausage. I like to put meatballs and pepperoni on my pizza because of Nightmare 4, but the sausage isn't my jam. It can go. But pizza and horror movies go perfect together, which is why this gets my rating of Four flaming pumpkins out of a possible five flaming pumpkins, which is a real rating system. Well, piggies, our time is coming to an end, at least in this video. Now you have to watch all 44 episodes. We'll probably have episode six out by then. Head on over to Screenbox to subscribe. Your first 30 days are free and the service has all sorts of goodies, like Freddy's Nightmares. More could you know? Dreambox is now powered by Bloody Disgusting and curated by the Bloody Disgusting team. Oh. Beards. And non. Beards. This is the first of many big treats they'll be presenting in 2022 and beyond. Did you hear that? There's goodies and treats. If you liked this episode, please subscribe and leave a comment. Because if you don't, I'm sending Freddy after you. I'm sending five flaming Freddies after ya! Tune in next time as I conquer another fear, try another tasty treat, and harass you with more of my sweet, sweet, spooky tickler.